Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue about house purchases. And in this one, we're going to focus on how much you can afford or how much house you can afford. Remember last time, one of the rule of thumbs that we described is that the house value should not be more than three to five times your annual income. Let's take a deeper dive into looking at how do they come up with this three or five times multiple as a benchmark. We are going to use a specific example. In this particular example, the household has an income of $120,000 per year. So remember the rule of thumb that we talked about, and we said that we can afford a house either three or five times our income. If you use a three times rule of thumb, three times $120,000 would mean that we can afford a house of $360,000. So that is on the conservative side. So let's take a look at how well does that rule of thumb work. We have to make some other assumptions to, uh, for this to be a realistic um, problem. We assume that this particular uh, household or uh, consumer has um, already has $1,200 per month in other expenses. And this is in addition to the mortgage. So those other, could, other expenses or other debt payment in particular in, may include a car loan, a student loan. Uh, we also want to add any homeowners association or condo fee. Again, we'll talk about this more, but these are just uh, expenses associated with owning a home. So we'll add all those to this particular amount. And we assume that they'll have a down payment of 10%. Uh, this can be, uh, you can change this number to a more re realistic number. 10% uh, is kind of the middle of the road. And because this is less than 20%, this homeowner will have to pay a private mortgage insurance premium. So remember earlier we said that PMI, private mortgage insurance, can be anywhere from half a percent to one and a half percent. That's quite normal. And so we're going to assume that is one percent. So these are all our assumptions. In addition, uh, we assume a mortgage interest rate of 6%. One, of course, a higher interest rate will mean that you can afford a lower house value because that's incre uh, higher interest will increase your expenses. We will use a standard fixed rate mortgage of 30 years. And for closing costs, we're going to assume again somewhere in the middle, 5% of your loan amount. And then uh, in order for them to stay in a soften situation in addition to the three to five times rule of thumb, we also want them to keep a debt to income ratio of less than 35%. As you can see, there's quite a bit of information to keep in mind. Uh, let us focus on one item at a time. First, let's focus on income. Uh, we know that our annual income is $120,000. And we also know that we do not want our debt payment to exceed 35% of that. So in the next step in our calculation, first we're going to convert our annual income into a monthly amount. So our annual income of $120,000 divided by 12, because they're 12 months per year, give us $10,000. So that's $10,000 per month, and that is our monthly income. Second, we remember that we don't want to exceed a debt to income ratio. Next, remember that we don't want to exceed a debt to income ratio of, point of 35%. So let's take a look at how would that affect us. So we'll take our monthly income of $10,000 and we'll multiply that by 0.35. That gives us $3,500. So this is our affordable debt payment within our debt to income ratio. So that's how we come up with this $3,500. We know that in addition to the mortgage payment, we also will have a other payment of $1,200. So that is something that we need to keep in mind. So the $3,500 that we have 
includes the $1,200 of other debt payments. So we do not have an entire $3,500 available for our mortgage. We have to subtract the $1,200 of other payment that we have. So when we subtract the $1,200, we end up with $2,300. And that's how we come up with the $2,300 here. So $2,300 is how much we can afford per month for our mortgage. So this is our affordable monthly mortgage payment. Next, we're going to convert this into a mortgage amount. And to do that, we have to use time value of money, which is the present value function that we have discussed in earlier chapters. So you, if you want a refresher, I will recommend that you go back and look at the module that we talk about time value of money. Uh, for those of you who remember, uh, the time value of money to compute the present value start with the present value function. And the first argument is the interest rate. So remember our interest rate was 6% per year, and we need to divide that by 12 to get the interest rate per month. And then this is a 30 year mortgage, but again, because monthly payment, we need to multiply that by 12. So we have a total of 360 payment. And then our payment amount is $2,300. So, and we'll make that an outflow negative, so we'll end up with a positive present value. So that is our present value formula. And applying that, that will give you a mortgage amount of $383,621. However, that did not take into account our private mortgage insurance. So we have to pay private mortgage insurance on that. And the way we come up with our private mortgage insurance is we take, we assume that is 1%. So let's take a look at those assumptions again. So we have an interest rate of 6%, 6 uh, length of mortgage is 30 years. So we use those two to help us compute the mortgage amount. And now we're going to compute private mortgage insurance, which is 1% of loan amount. So if we take our loan of $383,621, we have to multiply that by uh, our mortgage, private mortgage insurance, which is 1%, so it's 0 0.01, that will be per year. And we have that to then divide that by 12. And that's how we come up with $319.68. So that's our private mortgage insurance. That is money we have to pay in addition to our monthly payments. So we can't really afford $2,300. We can afford $2,300 altogether, including the mortgage payment and PMI. So if we take away PMI, so if we, so we take $2,300 and we subtract PMI of $319.68, we will end up with $1980.32. So this is the affordable monthly mortgage payment after we subtracted our PMI. So this is the true affordable monthly mortgage. Once again, we're going to use the present value function to figure out if we can only afford $1980.32 per month, what is the total loan amount we can afford? So the formula will be exactly the same except instead of $2300, now we know we can only afford $1,980.32. So the same present value formula, but the mortgage amount is $1,980. Using that as our monthly mortgage, it translates into a total loan amount of $330,301. So let's clear some of this information here. So all the calculations that we have done brings us to this one single important number. We can afford a mortgage of $330,301. Now let's take a look at what else do we need when we purchase a home. So we know that we have closing costs. Closing cost is 5% of the loan amount. 
So to do the closing costs, we take $330,301 times the 5%. So, and that will give us $16,515. So that's our closing cost. Next, we have to figure out what our uh, total house value that we can afford is given our down payment. In our assumption, we believe we can afford 10% of the house value as down payment. And to compute that is a little bit trickier. So we'll take the mortgage amount. So again, that's $330,301. We divide that by one minus the down payment. So the down payment is 10%. So basically we'll take $330,301 divide that by 0.9, and that will give us $367,000. That is our affordable home purchase price. Since this is how much the house price is, the down payment amount is this times 10%. So that gives us $36,700. If we add the closing cost, closing cost is $16,515. That will give us the $53,215. So this is the amount of money that you need at the time of closing. So this is down payment plus closing costs. So you need to bring $53,215 to, uh, to the um, mortgage company when you sign the contract. Now let's take a look at how good is our rule of thumb to this particular scenario. Using this detailed step-by-step -step calculation, we figure a home purchase price of $367,000. If we use our rule of thumb, which is uh, annual income, remember annual income is $120,000. So that is our annual income. And we set the rule of thumb is three to five times. So if we use the low end, the more conservative end, the rule of thumb will give us $360,000. That's our rule of thumb estimate. Our detailed calculation give us $367,000. So the rule of thumb actually works quite well in this particular situation. So let's take a look at some of the assumption on what makes this assumption work. Uh, we have a annual income $120,000. And this particular individual has $1,200 in other debt and other payments. So they don't have the full income or the entire income is not available for the mortgage. So that tells us that we probably should use a more conservative estimate. So we use three times. Um, so that's the low end of the rule of thumb. And the mortgage amount, uh, mortgage interest is 6%. So that is, um, that's again, is a long-term average. If your interest rate happens to be higher in a particular time period, you use, you want to use a even lower amount. So maybe even two times or two and a half times. If the interest rate is lower, then you might be able to use a slightly higher amount. So as we see that um, in this particular rule of thumb, we said the house value should be less than three to five times of your income. Uh, in our example, we saw that other monthly debt payment is $1,200. So that's about 10% of your gross income. So that's pretty high. So we should be using the lower end of the spectrum. So we're gonna use the three times, not the five times. So that gives us $360,000. Our estimate from the worksheet is $367,000. So that works quite well. Now, what happens if you're working with, uh, or your particular situation, you have much less debt payment? Let's say there are no other debt. That assumes that you now will be able to afford a larger mortgage and you might be able to use a higher end of the spectrum. So let's take a look at what the rule of thumb will say. So if you use the, so it's three to five times. So let's say four times. So you take $120,000 times four, that will give you a house that you can afford at $480,000. If you use the 
high end of the range for your rule of thumb, the five times, that will enable to put, say you can actually afford a $600,000 home. So how well, does, how well would our worksheet um, work in this particular situation? So here is our model. Uh, in the original model, we have a other payment of or other debt payment of twelve hundred dollars, and we end up with a house estimate of three hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. Let's say what happens if this is zero? We don't have any other debt payment. We will reduce that to zero, and our worksheet will automatically get updated, and we give us an estimate of five hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars. Let's compare that to our rule of thumb. So $538,000 is somewhere between these two, right? So our estimate actually works quite well. If there's no other debt payment, non any other homeowners association fee, none of that, our worksheet come up with $550,000. $8,500, which is somewhere between our four to five times estimate. So in this particular example, we show that uh, the, the rule of thumb actually work quite well. We'll add, end this video here. Again, um, in, this, in this class, we're gonna go over, not just give you the rule of thumb and say, use it, but actually have a deep understanding of when, under what situation the rule of thumb will apply and when do you need to need when you need to make modifications uh, if the situation is a little bit different from normal when you when we come back we're gonna go into um, other factors that we need to take into account when we are choosing a house see you soon <music>